In this lecture, I will be explaining you how different blood cells are synthesized. Do you know what are the different blood cells? They are red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. So, we will see now how these three different types of blood cells are synthesized. The main site for synthesis of blood cells is the bone marrow and bone marrow is the only site for synthesis of red blood cells, platelets and almost all the WBCs except lymphocytes. Now let us see in the bone marrow what is happening, how different cells are synthesized from the bone marrow. So this is a bone and within the bone is the cavity and this cavity is filled with lot of cells that can give rise to different types of blood cells. We call them as stem cells. The stem cells are present in the bone marrow that can differentiate into red blood cells, white blood cells and also platelets. So these stem cells are called hemopoietic stem cells hemopoietic stem cells. So, these are multipotent or pluripotent. Why do you say they are multipotent or pluripotent? Because these stem cells can give rise to any type of blood cells. They are not fixed to or committed to a particular cell type. So, that means from the stem cells itself all the type of blood cells are arising. So, these hemopoietic stem cells are present in the bone marrow and these will differentiate to give rise to these all the blood cells. Now we will explain how in detail how these stem cells will differentiate to form different blood cells. This is the bone and inside the bone is the bone marrow. The bone marrow is made up of stem cells. There are so many stem cells, numerous stem cells in the bone marrow. So these we call it as hemopoietic stem cells, hemopoietic stem cells. So these stem cells will multiplied to give rise to more and more stem cells, we call it as self replication property or these stem cells can also give rise to a new type of cell, we call this as differentiation. So from this hemopoietic stem cells, this will differentiate to a new type of cell, we call them as progenitor cells or progenitor cells. So these are actually committed stem cells. So, these are uncommitted, uncommitted pluripotent hemopoietic stem cells will differentiate to progenitor cells which are committed stem cells. What do you mean by this committed, committed means? So, these progenitor cells can either give rise to as one type of blood cell. This can give rise to either red blood cell or a progenitor cell can give rise to a megakaryocyte or a type of progenitor can give rise to lymphocytes. So, these are all committed progenitors. So, mainly there are two types of progenitors that are differentiated from the stem cells. So, these stem cells will get differentiated into two types of progenitors. One is the progenitor cell which can give rise to all the blood cells, all blood cells except lymphocytes, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. So, this progenitor cell is the myeloid progenitor. So, from the myeloid progenitor cells, all the blood cells are formed except the lymphocytes. So, this progenitor cell which will give rise to the lymphocyte is the lymphoid progenitor. Lymphoid progenitor. So, let me explain. There are so many stem cells in the bone marrow. 
These we call them as pluripotent or hemopoietic stem cells present in the bone marrow. They have the property of self replication. They can multiply, they divide and they can increase their colony, increase in number and also they have the property of differentiation. Differentiation means they transform into a new type of cell which is different from that of the stem cell and the new type of cells that are differentiated from the uncommitted pluripotent hemopoietic stem cells are the progenitor cells and there are two types of common progenitors that is the myeloid progenitor and the lymphoid progenitors. Myeloid progenitor cells will transform into all the blood cells except the lymphocytes. These lymphoid progenitor cells will give rise to the lymphocytes. Now we will explain how these myeloid progenitors are transforming or differentiation, differentiating. Myeloid progenitor cell is one among the two progenitor cells that are differentiated from the pluripotent hemopoietic stem cells. So that means the stem cell either can differentiate into the myeloid progenitor cell or the lymphoid progenitor cell. This is the myeloid and this is the lymphoid. So this myeloid progenitor cell that is differentiated from the hemopoietic stem cell, we call it as common myeloid progenitor. It is also called colony forming unit GEMM. -M. That means granulocyte, erythroid, megakaryocyte, macrophage. So all these cells are differentiated from the common myeloid progenitor. So this common myeloid progenitor will divide and they differentiate into different colonies. We call them as one is the colony forming unit megakaryocyte erythroid. The other one is the colony forming unit eosinophil. This is the colony forming unit basophil and one more colony we call it as colony forming unit granulocyte macrophage GM. So the myeloid progenitor cells will differentiate divide and transform differentiate to so many different colonies. So I have written only one cell here but these are colonies of so many cells which can give rise to other either megakaryocytes or the platelets or erythroids red blood cells. So here this colony will have so many cells which will differentiate to form eosinophils. And here in this colony there will be lot of cells this is the colony forming unit basophil which will differentiate finally giving rise to basophils. So here is a colony, colony forming unit granulocyte or macrophage. So from the cells of this colony, the cells of this colony can either give rise to two different types of colonies. So this is the colony forming unit granulocyte from this colony forming unit granulocyte, these cells will differentiate to give rise to neutrophils. And this colony forming unit GM can differentiate to one more type of colonies. So this we call it as colony forming unit macrophage. So these cells which are present in the colony forming unit macrophage will differentiate to give rise to monocytes. And these monocytes will get matured to form macrophages. This colony of uh, cells which are present in this megakaryocyte erythroid will give rise to two more colonies. This first colony is the colony forming unit meg, megakaryocyte. So from these cells which are present in the colony forming unit megakaryocytes, they differentiate to produce a megakaryocyte and from the megakaryocyte the platelets are produced.
so one more colony is formed from the colony forming unit meg e we call it as colony forming unit erythroid so this colony forming unit erythroid will differentiate to give rise to red blood cells some literatures tell the colony forming unit megakaryocyte will give rise to the colony we call it as burst forming unit erythroid and this burst forming unit erythroid cells will differentiate to colony forming unit erythroid cells and these cells which are present in the colony forming unit erythroids and they differentiate further will giving rise to the red blood cells so to summarize the bone marrow will have lot of stem cells which we call it as uncommitted pluripotent or multipotent hemopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow these stem cells will differentiate to progenitor cells there are two main types of progenitor cells the myeloid progenitors and the lymphoid progenitors the lymphoid progenitor cells will differentiate to give rise to the lymphocytes myeloid progenitor cells will differentiate to give rise to all the blood cells except the lymphocytes so this main common myeloid progenitor we call it as gfu colony forming unit gemm so these myeloid progenitors have the ability to replicate they are in colonies so all the cells in the colony of myeloid progenitor we call them as colony forming unit gemm that means this myeloid common myeloid progenitor can either differentiate into the granulocyte erythrocyte macrophage and also megakaryocyte and platelets so these cells which are present in the common myeloid progenitor colony will again differentiate to give rise to more number of colonies they can be either colony forming unit megakaryocyte megakaryocyte and erythroid this is a colony forming unit eosinophil this is a colony forming unit basophil and this is a colony forming unit granulocyte and macrophage so from the colony forming unit megakaryocyte erythroid the two colonies are again formed one is the colony forming unit megakaryocyte from where the platelets are produced from the burst forming unit erythroid they again differentiate to form one more colony we call it as colony forming unit erythroid and from this colony forming unit erythroid the red blood cells are synthesized so this is about the hemopiasis the synthesis of different blood cells from the bone marrow we call it as hemopiasis in the next subsequent classes we'll explain how red blood cells are synthesized within the bone marrow from the colony forming unit erythroid from this colony forming unit erythroid how the mature red blood cells are synthesized